I need to limit the inrush current to a uh, mercury vapor tube to the heater on the tube. Now, when that heater is cold, the uh, resistance is very low, and the in inrush current is going to be high. And then as it warms up, uh, it'll actually draw about 7 amps when it's uh, fully uh, heat heated up. But in the meantime, it can draw three, four times that, uh, that current, and it could damage the, uh, the heater. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use an NTC. It's a negative thermal conductivity. And I'm going to use an NTC to limit the current into the, uh, into the heater. And this is the unit I'm using right here. Now, you need to do that for these, these, these heater elements. And if you have a capacitor, you know, while the capacitor is in charging phase, uh, the capacitor acts like a dead short, and so the inrush current is high. And an inductor is the same thing. It acts like a dead short until the inductive reactants and the magnetic field uh, builds up, okay? So, and you know, the inrush current can be 10 to 40 times the, the rated current. So we want to find the, uh, the minimum resistance required for the maximum allowable current, okay? So, uh, what we do is we take the resistance is going to be equal to our our peak value our 1.414 times the uh, volts AC which is our RMS value so we get our peak voltage and we divide that by our maximum allowable current so in my case I want to have uh, 7 amps to be my maximum allowable current through that unit because it can handle that and then uh, this is going to be like uh, uh, 2.5 volts times the uh, 1.414 so in my case, when I do this, I do the math here, it comes out to about 5 ohms. I need about 5 ohms of resistance to limit the current. On a DC circuit, you just take the maximum allowable current into the DC voltage. Now the steady state current, you have to know that too. In this case, I know it's 7. It's on the specs that the, the, the heater draws seven, 7 amps. So whatever your unit uh, draws, your steady state current is, is, is the current you use. And you, you want to find your, your joules too. So uh, how much energy the NTC will, will absorb when it's switched on, okay? So, now, for a capacitor, you take your joules is equal to the capacitance times the voltage squared divided by 2, and that's the peak voltage squared divided by 2. So, if you have um, uh, 6,000 microfarad, uh, and you do the math here, it comes out to about 85 joules, so your unit has to be able to handle that. And in an inductor, you take your inductance times the... Uh, the uh, amperage squared divided by 2. So if we have 7 Henrys at 5 amps squared, that's that's going to be about uh, 87 uh, joules. Now, if you don't know your capacitance or your, your uh, inductance, this is kind of a rule of thumb that, that uh, will work, get you in a ballpark. You take 30 times your current times the uh, this 0 0.0167, that's for that's one uh, 60 cycle. The time it takes for one cycle. If you're 50 hertz, it's going to be a little different. Times your voltage, your peak voltage, and uh, if we put one amp into that, it comes out to 84 joules. So, you know, you'll be safe if you uh, if you use that calculation. So, now we, we need to find the uh, the unit. This one happens to be a uh, 5D20. Okay, so I go over to their website here, and I find their uh, their thing here. This is the uh, uh, this is going to be the ohms at 25 degrees centigrade, and this is the steady state current right here. So those are the two units I'm going to use. And if we go down here to uh, our five ohms at our seven amps, so at five ohm at uh, 25 uh, degrees, it's going to it's going to have five ohms on it. As it heats up, though, then it's going to be uh, the the resistance is going to drop off to 0 0.087 ohms, so it won't affect the uh, the heater then. So, and it can handle seven amps. So, this is the unit I want to use. So, this it's a 5D20. So, that's what we're going to use for our um, in our circuit for the uh, uh, heater on the uh, on the tube. Now I don't want to experiment with the, uh, the the heater on the tube because I don't want to wreck it. So I have a uh, a unit set up outside here. A, uh, I'm running going to run a motor here. So and then we're going to use these uh, 
NTCs uh, to uh, control the current in the motor. Now, you can actually put them in series. These are only five ohms. I needed, you know, 20 ohms or so on this. So I just put, I put them in series, okay? So we're gonna turn it on and see what the, uh, what the inrush current is on this, on this motor here. So it looks like to me it went up to about uh, uh, eight, eight amps and uh, it's running about uh, 3.25 right now, okay? So let's, let's try the, uh, this unit here. We're gonna of course this isn't the safest way to do this. I put four of these in series. Now, let's see what it. Uh, let's see what the inrush current goes up to. Yeah, about uh, about four. So um, now, if I let these things uh, heat up, then the the current will, current will, will rise up. But uh, one disadvantage with this, these is that you can't. Uh, you have to wait for them to cool down before you uh, start it up again. So, the time it went up to about six. So, if, if you, uh, as they heat up, the, uh, the the resistance drops off, but it takes a while for them to cool down to uh, to get back. So, when they were cold, it went up to about uh, you know four. It it it, it cut the uh, inrush current in about half with that. So, that'll that's how that works. Anyway, um, that's a uh, an NTC, um, and I'm going to use it on my uh, tube. Yeah, here it is here, and uh, it's going to work out just fine. So uh, now these you uh, you have to get warm. You have to have them uh, uh, somewhere where they're not going <laughs> to melt. Their, they do get pretty hot, and uh, so they have to be protected from the from the you know the heat there. So uh, that's it. Uh, thank you.